Hello, welcome to I just got my 3D makeup, now what do I do? So if you're watching this video, you have either just purchased your makeup or you are watching this because you're getting ready to put it on for the first time. Either way, this is for you. It's for your first time application. Likely you may have seen me put it on before. Maybe you were invited to a party and watched me do it live, but it's probably been a little bit and you just need to see it again. So we're going to go slowly step by step on putting your makeup on for the first time. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is obviously your stuff, probably you've already looked through your box. Your, your little package, but you're going to go through all your tins of makeup. You're going to slide the lid off and you're going to put it in your magnetic compact. Now, how you arrange your colors is up to you. You may want to eventually arrange them in the order that you put them on. If you have a routine, uh, you know, where you specifically have an order of where you put them on. I'm going to show you the order of how I put mine on, but honestly, everybody kind of does it their own way. And eventually you're just going to look at your colors. You're going to know which ones they are and you're going to know where they go. And I promise it will literally be a no brainer. You'll be able to do this in bad lighting. You'll be able to do this in the car. It really will be so simple for you. But for the first time, we're going to go through it pretty slow. Okay. So likely if you were color matched uh, from me, you got at least two highlight colors, maybe three. You got a contour and a blush minimum, right? You may have expanded and got a bronzer. You may have got an illuminator. You may even got a couple of blushes and some eyeshadows. And I am so happy for you because you're my kind of girl. Go big or go home. But, you know, for minimum application, I'm just going to do the basics. And you all can embellish with your other stuff, you know, to your heart's content. So I have my colors in my compact. This is the compact um, 12. This is usually the size I recommend because it's still small enough to throw in your purse, but it's got lots of room to grow, okay? And that's what I think is important because you are just starting a love affair with makeup again, and you're going to want more. Okay, so hopefully you got at least one brush or two that I recommended. I usually will recommend two just because I feel like there's two brushes I just think are really all you need. Do I love all the brushes? Absolutely. Do I use them all? Yes. But to start, I really feel like you can get away with just two. And very likely, these are the two I recommended, which is the 3D brush and the detail brush. I may have recommended to you the blush and bronzer brush if you're somebody who got the bronzer or if you are just someone who wants the lightest, lightest, lightest of coverage because these brushes are so fluffy, they don't pick up much product. So that's very possible I recommended this. But I'm gonna use makeup, my makeup putting these two on just so you can see because these are the ones I recommend the most. Okay, so if you got a corrective color, and the only reason I would have given you a corrective color is if you have some significant under eye darkness, um, you have some redness, um, maybe some melasma, I, we will have discussed it, okay? So think back to our conversation and what I recommended to you. If you just have two colors, then likely I just gave you a lighter and a darker uh, to play with, to have some wiggle room, to mix together when you need, and one would be more of a main and one would be more of a brightener. So if you have a corrective color, you're gonna start with that. So I consider my under eye darkness something that needs an extra color, a different color. So I'm going to go in and deal with that first. When you're dealing with your under eye um, specifically or spot treating redness, you want to use a small brush. Now the small end of the detail brush can work. It does just kind of fit nice under my eye. But if you are going to be spot treating redness, like if you have hormonal breakouts and you're treating little red spots with Aspen, which is um, could be a color that I've recommended to you for redness, if you are light to medium skin tone, if you are darker skinned, like if the colors you're wearing are maybe mango, goddess, papaya, then Aspen would be too light. But if you're someone who's going to be treating redness with Aspen, you want a little brush. It doesn't have to be one of ours. This happens to be one that I love. It's called the smudge brush. Um, but most people have just a little brush they could use. You know what I mean? Just something with a small, small end. And the reason that's important is because I just want you to put that Aspen 
where it's red. I don't want it to go on other parts of your skin that have no problems, okay? Because then you're just having to cover up more colors that don't belong on your skin. So just when you put it on the red, it neutralizes that red. And maybe it's even a big area you have redness. That's okay. If you have a big area, then I want you to go in with a little bigger brush just so it'll go quicker. I want it to be a light layer though, okay? So again, we're back. We're just starting with corrective colors. For my corrective color, I'm gonna go into what works for my under eye darkness, and that is a little bit of amber and June mixed together. So I just hit the dark parts of my eye with this um, small smudge brush because I like that it just can target where I am the darkest. And I don't obsess over completely covering it because I would be here all day. And honestly, I think it's weird when there's no variation of color. So you can see already that compared to that is already better. The reason these colors are working is because they're not super light. They're, they're, they've got quite a bit of color to them because if I was trying to cover all this dark area with a super light color, it wouldn't work, okay? I'm pretty happy with that. That's done. I'm gonna stop there, okay? Now, I'm gonna go in first with my darker highlight color. Now my darker highlight color is gonna go where I'm the darkest, which for me is always kind of where I'm the red, you know, I've got a red nose. This isn't really red enough for me to put Aspen on. I could, but I don't really feel like I need to. Um, if, if I'm really, really red, I will use Aspen, but I'm just gonna use uh, my darkest color because darkest colors on in your compact, the darkest highlight I gave you will cover dark better, okay? You don't want to go in with your lightest color and try to cover the darkest parts of your face. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of um, Sandy, which is my darkest color. I'm going to go, I'm, now I'm going to go to the uh, 3D brush, the, the bigger end, and I'm just going to hit my nose where that red is with Sandy. Look how quickly that got neutralized. That's because it's a fairly dark color, but it doesn't look dark on my face because it was dark enough just to cover my red. Isn't that crazy? I feel like all years, uh, forever, we've been doing this wrong. We've been taking way too light of a color and trying to get it to cover everything. That's why we're not happy with our makeup. That's why it doesn't cover. That's why we're putting way too much on, right? Right. Now, I've also got a little discoloration on my chin. I'm gonna hit that with Sandy as well because it will cover quicker and better with less product. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of travel around and I'm gonna go in with my lighter color now. Remember, we're not putting colors on top of colors. We're not gonna go back and put two and three layers. These colors I'm gonna go in with now are not gonna go on top of anything else. So I've got nothing here so far, so I'm putting my lighter color kind of here. Now if you have redness or discoloration here, you're gonna still go in with your darker color. I don't want you to be scared and think, oh, I'm gonna put the wrong color in the wrong place. If I've given you colors, it's because they're gonna work on your skin, okay? The worst thing that can happen is it could look a little too dark because you've used too much dark or it could look a little too light because you've used too much light. So if you just play with it and not be nervous about it, it's just makeup, you can't mess it up. Experiment. Uh, my lightest color always goes along my jawline, along the bottom part of my face, because that's where I have, you know, not a lot of color and it's next to my neck and I want it to be, I want to match, okay? And then right here, and you see how quickly I'm moving it around and the key is I am just tapping into my makeup. Tap, tap, that's all. I do not want you to swipe drag your brush across. I just want you to tap into it, right? Now, I'm just going to go under my eye a little bit here with just a little bit of my lighter color, but I'm not going to wipe away that corrective work I did. I'm just sort of stippling it on top, okay? You could use this brush too as well if you as, for this if you wanted. You're going to get used to the brush and you're going to kind of figure out which end you like for what. It just automatically happens, right? Okay. So, I mean, I've evened out my skin. I've done everything the highlight needs to do. I've kind of, you know, taken care of all of the um, discoloration issues that I kind of had going on. Tap a little more if you see something you missed. Don't worry about it. Okay, but now we're going to contour. Now, you can contour with this end if this is the brush you got. In fact, I'll do, I'll do like half my face with this brush. So now we're going to go into contour. Contour is the dark color. 
And probably this is the first, well, not probably, this could be the first time you've contoured. And I promise you, it's so simple. So we're going to start with it up here, high on our hairline, and we're going to come down. We're, we're going to come down in kind of a V, but we're not going to bring it in any closer than the highest point like of our eyebrow. So don't come in any higher than, or uh, more, you know, more inside than this. Just keep it kind of high like that. Now, if you have the detail brush, it's this end you're going to use. This actually is my favorite brush to uh, contour. So do you see how I've left this kind of alone? We're only putting makeup where there's been no makeup so far. You know what I mean? So this is just going to be a matter of blending now, softening it. But we're leaving the center bright. Go back into that brush that had your highlight on it and just make sure that it just blends beautifully. So you've just contoured your forehead. You can go as deep and as dark with this as you want. It's completely your taste. But here's what I will say. Make sure you can see it. If you pull back and you don't see any shading here, you've not put enough. And I know for contour, because for a lot of you it's a new concept and you're new to it, you're going to be very careful with it. And that's okay, but I want you to have the effect of it. So make sure that when you put it on, you're putting on enough and make sure you're not over blending it because it will just disappear. Now let's go in and do a little cheekbone. We're going to do the same brush here. You could also use, I'll use both brushes again so you can see. So remember with contour, where you put it, you find your cheekbone, travel down, your finger is going to go right underneath it where you can kind of nestle under, under that bone. This is where you're going to put it and you're going to take it all the way back to your hairline and then push up. This again is taste. You can add as much as you want. You can be as dark as you want. If you just want it pretty and subtle, just, you know, take it easy and put a little bit. But again, this is same, the same rules apply. If you don't see it, you haven't put enough. Now I'm going to use the other brush so you can see. So we're going to use the pointy end and we're just going to kind of draw a little line all the way back to the hairline. Don't come down any lower than the middle of your iris because if you come in too low, you've now, you're kind of dragging your face down and that kind of goes against the point of contour. So just blend it up, push it up. Don't swirl it in circles because we don't want just a brown cheek. We're trying to create shadow. And if you feel like you've gone a little ham with it and put too much, just again, go back in with your big end of your brush that had your foundation on it and just blend it and make it pretty. So now, not only was I covered well before, now I've got some really pretty warmth and dimension to my face. It's coming together, right? Now, blush. Blush is one of my most favorite things to wear because it's really when I start to kind of feel like I've come to life. So don't skip the blush. And I hope that you got one. I'm sure you did. So the blush I'm going to use is Dahlia, which is a blush that looks very, very pink in the tin, but it's not because the beauty of our blushes, of cream blushes, is that it's completely controllable by you. You get to decide how dark it's going to be, how light it's going to be, where it's going to go. I feel like with powder blush, it kind of went everywhere and then it stuck to your liquid foundation and then you couldn't move it. This is just like a joy to put on. So I'm going to go back in with my kind of round end of my brush. Now where I put, where you put your blush on is kind of up to you, but just so you know, the higher you put your blush, the more kind of lift it's going to give your cheek. And so I like to put mine kind of high on my apple and then right back almost on top of that contour. So just feather it. And this is so beautiful. You can just, it's buildable. So if you want a little deeper color, just add more but I'm just tapping. That's all I'm doing. Got it? If you put too much on, you will hate it. And that's of any, any of these products, any, the highlight, the contour, anything. If you put too much on, you won't like it. And that's the mistake that most people, just so you know, most people make the first time they put their makeup on. They'll send me their picture and I can tell they're used to how much makeup they had to put on in the past. They've really put that brush into that, or they've gone back into the color many times, and they have too much on. 
And then what will happen is later in the day, it will feel greasy. It will feel, you will feel oily. You won't like the way it feels. It might separate. So the key is to put very little. So essentially I'm done. I've done my highlight colors. I've done my contour and I put some blush on. How I know I've done it right is first of all, it looks great. It matches, it looks beautiful, all my skin is even, but I take my hands, I tell all my new girls, take your hands and I want you to do this all over your face. Don't be scared. If it feels like nothing and nothing comes off on your hands and it doesn't feel sticky or tacky, you've done it right. That's how you know you've put the right amount on, okay? It should never ever feel sticky or tacky. I feel nothing on my face. That's how little I have on, okay? So that is the only real learning curve with this makeup is just applying a tiny bit and seeing how far it goes. Move your brush around quickly. Don't obsess about covering an area for a long time because what that ends up doing is you just end up putting too much makeup in that area. Put a thin layer everywhere. See what you think. If there's an area that didn't quite get covered like you want, then go back in and put a touch more. And I can't stress this enough. When I say a touch, I mean a touch. That is all you need. This makeup is 35% pigment. That's a lot for makeup. Liquid foundations are mostly water with very little pigment. And that is why your face will feel tight after wearing it for a while because all the water evaporates very quickly once it goes on your skin and you're left with just this sort of tight feeling on your skin because whatever kept it sort of supple is now gone. This cream makeup stays on your skin all day. It doesn't evaporate. It doesn't soak in. It sort of melts into your skin and doesn't look like makeup, but it doesn't disappear, right? It doesn't go anywhere. If during the day, later on in the day, you feel like you've, you know, you've been working outside a lot and you feel like it's kind of collected, it may have, but all you're going to do is take your finger and pat it out, pat it out. You don't need to necessarily add more, okay? And I don't know about you, but I always felt like I had to add more makeup through the day because I felt like it was disappearing. If the color is right, this makeup will not disappear. And that's why color matching was so important to me. And that's why it was important that I got it right. And that's, imp and that's why it's important that once you put your makeup on for the first time now, you're going to send me a picture because I need to make sure that it's covering. I need to make sure it looks even and beautiful and like your natural skin tone. I don't want a huge variation between your neck and face. Um, there can be some, but I, it can't be major or, you know, it, it will look, it will look artificial. So you're going to put your makeup on now. You're going to send me a picture and we're going to just make sure the color is right. If the color is slightly off, I may have some suggestions like maybe you put too much of your dark color. Maybe you put too much of your light. We're going to kind of work through that. Um, but if, it's after, if after a few times we just know the color is not quite right, we have 60 days to swap a color out, right? So it goes even, even beyond 30. It goes 60 days and you can swap a color out. So we don't need to mess with it that long. We'll know within a first, the first few attempts if the color is right. But this is what you should be expecting. A no makeup feel covers what you want. You feel beautiful in it. It feels like nothing on your face. It's not heavy and you just are in love with it. That's what I want you to be. So thank you for watching. I hope this helps. If you have any questions after this, please reach out to me. Thank you so much.